and it's great to be back at the Singularity University's Global Summit and to have this opportunity to talk about AI for Good. And thank you for the Singularity University for creating the space to have this important conversation. Um, now, I lead Emerging Technologies uh, Initiative at NetHope uh, with a focus on AI and blockchain. And NetHope is a nonprofit technology consortium of 57 global NGOs. Organizations like Oxfam, Save the Children, Mercy Corps, Habitat for Humanity, The Nature Conservancy, all of us working together also with 60 plus of our partners, including technology companies, some of them in the room here with us today. I'll share a few insights um, in a brief introduction uh, before I bring Tess, Cameron, and Amir on stage to have a discussion about AI for good. First, what do we mean when we say AI for good? AI for good is about using AI to solve some of the society, society's toughest problems. AI can help us do good better. Um, it can help us do a number of things better. It can help us make decisions and act faster in emergencies like natural disasters. It can help us reach more people with services and information that they need, like refugees. It can also help us have the insights that we need to predict and prevent some of the worst things from happening, like infectious disease outbreaks. And in my work at NetHope, I see two things that are quite promising. First, we know that despite the tremendous progress that we've made over the past several decades, as shared by Ray and Peter, we still have some massive societal challenges that we need to solve, from the global refugee crisis, infectious disease outbreaks, environmental challenges, to poverty, hunger, or human trafficking. And AI can help us move the needle on all of these different challenges. For example, we're starting to see AI being used to predict crop yields so we can pre prevent famines and alleviate poverty. We can, it can help us provide early warning systems for earthquakes so we can actually save lives or prevent poaching of elephants and other wildlife by giving us information for smarter park ranger routes. In short, AI applies to all 17 sustainable development goals. The second area that's promising, and first, it's important to know that we in the nonprofit sector know that we cannot solve these societal challenges alone. We can chip away at them, but that's not enough. We need partners. And what I'm seeing in my work on emerging technologies at NetHope is something that Rob and a number of others talked about here on the main stage is that uncommon partners, enterprises, startups, nonprofits, academia, and communities from all over the world coming together to work on uh, solutions to these societal challenges. So that, that's promising. But it's also important to note that it's so early. It's early days for AI and nonprofit sector. The use of AI is still very nascent. And we have many pilots that are not yet delivering any major impact or scale. And there are a few things that we need to do in order to achieve broader adoption and scaled impact. And I'll mention, and also to mitigate risks, and I'll mention three that we'll explore in more detail in the discussion in a few minutes. First, we need to shift from talking mostly about the potential of AI for societal good to nonprofits and communities around the world knowing how to develop and use AI solutions. More on that in a minute. Second, Inclusivity should not stop at nonprofits and communities having a seat at the table and becoming creators. We all need to put inclusivity, fairness, and other ethical considerations in the work that we do. Whether it's the teams we hire, the data we use, how we frame the problems, how we implement the solutions, and whether we use some of the solutions that could cause harm. Third, 
we need to start with the problems that people and communities are facing today, not with the technology. Now, as a technologist, I'm super excited about the technological innovations that we've been hearing about over the past two days. But also, as a humanitarian, and as a former refugee myself, I know firsthand that the value of technologies like AI will come from practical implementations, solving real problems, and doing that in a sustainable and scalable way. And with that, I would like to bring Tess, Cameron, and Amir on stage to join me for a discussion. So a brief introduction, and then we'll dive deeper into what each of the organizations represented on this stage are doing in the AI for Good space. Tess Bosner, Tess and I go way back in the social impact space. Uh, she leads AI for All, which is a nonprofit dedicated to increasing diversity and inclusion in AI. Cameron Burge, a uh, close partner of NetHope, works on the Microsoft Philanthropies team where he's managing AI for Humanitarian Action Initiative. And I'll let Cameron share more about the work that AI for Humanitarian Action is doing. And Amir Banifatami, he wears a number of hats, is a, is a great partner. Um, he leads IBM Watson AI X Prize, which is a global competition focused on using AI to tackle the world's grand challenges. He also leads AI Commons, a community focused on collaborating on solutions to societal challenges. So, and just briefly, I'll play two roles in this discussion. I'll be the moderator and also representing the work of the global NGOs and our partners. And with the time that we have available, we'll have a conversation on the main stage and then take the advantage of the lunch break to connect with all of you one on one. So let's start with a brief overview of what, what each of the organizations is doing in AI for Good Space. So Tess, over to you. Yes, thank you. So excited to be here. Thank you, Layla. Thank you both. And thank you all for coming. So helping kids with autism communicate. Diagnosing dyslexia early with webcams. Tracking the spread of wildfires. These are all amazing applications of AI for Good, and they're all started by high school students. Um, so AI for All, the organization that I lead, we're really focused on increasing diversity and inclusion in AI with the goal of maximizing the potential of AI for good. And we run education and mentorship programs um, so far in North America, but we're going to be expanding globally. And our goal is really to provide exposure, AI literacy, and mentorship for those that would otherwise be left behind out of the AI uh, space and, and realm. And we've seen amazing results so far. So our young people, 77% of them want to go into AI after the programs. 100% feel like AI can benefit the world. But what's most amazing is that they on their own have impacted an additional 6,000 young people. And so what we've seen is when we give people access to these tools and we give them agency and a voice, it has this incredible network effect. And we really believe that we are only going to get the results that we want with the potential of AI for good and some of the things that Layla mentioned, if we make this accessible and inclusive to everyone and not just those that are getting access to it now. Thank you, Jess. Cameron? Uh, thank you, Layla. Thank you, everybody, for being here. Uh, so as mentioned, I do work on the AI for Humanitarian Action Initiative for Microsoft, which is part of our overall AI for good portfolio. Um, we actually have four pillars. There's AI for Earth, which is focusing on I issues such as biodiversity, climate change, agricultural outputs, and water cleanliness. We have AI for accessibility, uh, bringing AI tools to ensure that those with disabilities around the world still have access to the same digital opportunities that are currently taking place. We have AI for humanitarian action. So we have a third sister in this uh, little forum. And we're focusing on projects around human rights, uh, disaster response, refugees and displaced persons, and needs of children. And then one that was recently announced was this AI for cultural heritage, and how to use AI tools to help preserve uh, things that might be lost as we continue to advance. 
And actually, all these programs are just extensions of work that Microsoft was already doing. We, we have been in the humanitarian action space for a long time. It, actually, it's why I was brought on board. I actually manage how the company responds to humanitarian disasters. But these programs were spun out and provided resources so that we can provide our resources, our expertise to organizations that are working in the space to help them move forward, to give them the tools they need to do either respond better or work better uh, in this area. And so it's, um, it's a five-year overall initiative, and we've had quite a few projects have spun out and look forward to explaining them. Thank you, Cameron. Amir, you're doing a number of things. Thank you very much, Leila, and thank you, and thank you all for, for being here. Uh, I'm also excited to share a little bit of what we do at XPRIZE. Uh, four years ago, uh, XPRIZE is a nonprofit organization that uh, for the past 25 years have incentivized everyone in the world to take on large challenges. It started with going back to space from citizens, cleaning up the oceans, uh, helping refugees, uh, solving uh, carbon sequestration, and basically tackling all the grand challenges. So XPRIZE, in the, in the course of its effort, is in the business of incentivizing and creating pathways and collaboration frameworks to enable everyone in the world to participate in solving challenges that may not be solved through the natural course of science or venture capital or government support. So it was very natural that four years ago with the growth of AI that we asked ourselves that question, which was what AI is good for and how can we know AI is useful for society and helping challenges. And that manifested itself by the first competition uh, supported by IBM Watson to enable a number of teams to, to participate and solve that uh, and solve for that question. And that led us pretty much very quickly to observe through the participation of 150 teams across 40 countries that what they, want, they wanted to solve for was actually supporting the sustainable development goals. They were talking about eradicating poverty, helping children learn faster, helping giving people more agency about their destiny on, on getting credits or micro credits. And, and that, it, in fact, uh, inspired us to start the conversation about AI 